This now we're joined by columnist and war correspondent Eric Margolis, who's on the line from New York. Eric, morning to you. So, as we saw in that report there, the U.S. killing more and more civilians in drone attacks across the Middle East, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Now it intends to expand its remote-controlled war to Yemen. How effective, really, are these drone attacks against al-Qaeda? Well, they're effective in killing a small number of alleged uh, militants. Uh, they are effective in enraging a large number of people. Now, the attacks on Yemen have been going on for over a year. They're going to accelerate. The attacks on Pakistan, which have been going on for years, and I know this having written for the Pakistani press, uh, that about 90 or 93 percent of the victims of these attacks were uh, innocent civilians, because the targets of the attacks, the militants are always hiding in civilian compounds, or that's where they'd spend the night and eat. And the U.S. calls them suspected militant targets or collateral damage. Nevertheless, a lot of innocent people are being killed, and a lot of more and more people are angry about it. So if they're so good at hitting the wrong people, and, um, and also so good at making bad PR, why is the U.S. using them? Uh, it's, uh, it's a cheap way to fight, doesn't endanger any American lives. Uh, it's popular in Capitol Hill because it appears to be having success. And uh, the military's got to come up with something, or CIA uh, saying, uh, you know, we're, we're killing militants. It's the old body count list. But uh, there's, a, there's a, a danger here, and that is that American intelligence professionals have been rightly saying for some time that as the CIA becomes more and more militarized, yeah. uh, it is losing its primary mission, which is to provide intelligence and information on an unbiased basis, and it's getting caught up in this war where it's now a participant, and its decisions are, and the information will be biased as a result. So let me just get this clear. The CIA has as much say as the military in launching these drone attacks, yeah? Oh, they probably have more say. And look, we have, there's another player, too, which is this Joint Special Operations Command, which are all these Delta Force and uh, uh, Rangers, all these mysterious shadowy groups uh, who are operating independently, in many cases, of the regular military command as well. So you've got CIA gunmen, you've got these uh, uh, Joint Special Operations people, and on top of that, you've got CIA mercenary troops running around as well. We talked about the, the, the cost of it just now. You mentioned the cost effective. I mean, how cost effective are they? If I was in the Pentagon and I was tossing it up, how much well, it would cost to send one of these in as opposed to sending in somebody, a, 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 a manned weapon? Uh, they're, they're very cheap uh, to run. They're little gasoline-powered uh, toy airplanes, really, with uh, one Hellfire missile or two on them. And uh, they are cheap. But there's a much more important cost than that is, as I know the Afghans very well. Uh, there's an old saying in India, beware the revenge of the Afghan. And mm. you kill an Afghan's family, he is never going to forget. And they are going to come after uh, the people who did it. And uh, the Americans are going to have to deal with this. All right, Eric. Good to have your insight uh, on the program. Thanks for being with us tonight. Eric Margolis joining us on the line from New York there. My pleasure.